Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, July 12th. I'm Dave Chodowski and for Danielle Wiggins with your three news now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook and Instagram pages. We have a rainy week ahead. And a lot of rain, it looks like. Holly has the forecast. Good morning, Holly. Good morning to you, Dave. And to those of you joining us here, we are starting with your National Design Mart hour-by-hour -hour forecast because you'll see throughout the course of this afternoon, we've got these downpours and thunderstorms popping up again. And many of you are under a flash flood watch because of it. So it goes until 10 o'clock tonight, and it's including all along the lakeshore, west, east suburbs, inland, through Akron, through Medina, even into Geauga County. This is the picture at 4 o'clock today, and we're seeing uh, a lot of these downpours. Thunderstorms are not out of the question. Some could be stronger with gusty winds, so we can't rule out even an isolated severe storm. And then we continue to see these downpours through later on this evening and then overnight things calm down a bit. We get into your Tuesday, very similar to this morning where we're not looking at a ton of rain, but then later in the day we start to see more of that activity again. So we are going to be pretty similar for the next couple of days. By Wednesday, we are planning on drying things out a bit and uh, it should be at least a little bit of a breather by the time we get to Midweek. I'll explain in your seven day forecast here in just a sec. But for the rest of today, it is going to be a soaker at times. So make sure you're allowing plenty of time if you have to run a few errands or, you know, even if it's things like, you know, returning home from work or picking up the kids at uh, swimming lessons, which may be canceled today because of this. 80 the high. And then tomorrow, more scattered showers, storms. Wednesday could see wet weather early. Then on Thursday, we are going to have a dry day for a change, which will be nice. 87, partly sunny skies, very July. Friday into the first part of the weekend, we get into some scattered storms. And then on Sunday, it looks like we're dry again. We'll keep you updated throughout the week, Dave. All right, Holly, thank you. We are going to start with daily COVID-19 cases. Sunday, the state reported 231 cases, not too inconsistent with recent daily totals, but Saturday, 299 cases were reported after a week of cases in the 300s. 10 new hospitalizations were also reported Sunday. And today, Pfizer is set to meet with U.S. health officials to discuss a third booster shot. But when it comes as news that we may not need the shot surfaces, Pfizer's research suggests a third dose can offer more protection against the highly contagious Delta variant, but the CDC and FDA say Americans who have been fully vaccinated do not need a booster shot at this time. Here's what Dr. Anthony Fauci has to say about the issue. That doesn't mean that we're not very, very actively following and gathering all of this information to see if and when we might need it, and if and when we do, we'll have everything in place to do it. We'll be following that story today on air and online throughout the entire afternoon. Well, happening locally today, the sentencing for a once well-known children television star. Having said that, how do you plead to count one? Attempted endangering children, felony of the fourth degree. Guilty. Drake Bell pled guilty to all charges of child endangerment in June. His sentencing is set for noon. Today in Cuyahoga County, the sentencing comes after involving Bell and then a 15-year-old girl, 34-year-old, admitted to both attempting to endanger children and disseminating material harmful to juveniles. And now we continue to follow the developing news from Surfside, Florida, where the death toll spiked this weekend. 90 people found dead as of Sunday as four more bodies were found. 31 people are still feared lost in the rubble of the 12-story building. Among the newly identified victims are three young children. Miami Dade Mayor, the Miami Dade Mayor, says 71 of the 90 victims have been identified. Our team continues to make incredible progress delayering the pile. And we're working to bring closure to families as quickly as we possibly can. We have now recovered over 14 million pounds of concrete and debris. And now it is time for the best news that you will hear all day. If you have a sweet tooth, there's a brand new local business in Northeast Ohio and you need to check it out. And even better, 
It's run by a mother-daughter duo. You may remember Ardelia and Cherish Holmes. We first brought you their story back in January. For Cherish's 12th birthday, her mom gifted her a business called Coco Gourmet Chocolate Bar. They opened a pop-up location at Beachwood Mall. And they did so well, they now have their very own space. The storefront officially opened Saturday at Beachwood Place. Ardelia and Cherish say they actually had to close early because they sold out, wow, which meant they had to open late on Sunday so they could get all their treats made. So they are so grateful for all of the support. And some more good news. Guess what comes back this week? The Cleveland Metro Park's Asian Lantern Festival returns on Wednesday. The zoo will be transformed with more than 1,000 new illuminated lanterns, live acrobatic performances, and culturally inspired cuisine. Snag your tickets now. You can find a link on WKYC.com. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories, making headlines around Northeast Ohio and the world. Make sure to continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Dave Chodowski, and I'll see you on Tuesday morning on Go. Have a great Monday, everybody.